Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Tom Evans, and on behalf of our staff here and all of our volunteers who put this service together, we hope and pray this will be a special time for you, especially now today as we celebrate All Saints Day. Uh, one thing I want to do, though, before we get going, I want to kind of make an announcement now, and I'll make it again at the end of the service, but this way for our members who are at home, I want to make sure they hear this. Next Sunday, for one, is our Polka Sunday, Chuck Teal and the Jolly Ramblers. It's an awesome time. They are going to be here, but uh, we're changing things up a little bit. The 8 o'clock service is mandatory mask all the time. So when you're sitting in the pew, keep your mask on. Uh, second service at 1030, once you're in the pew, then it's up to you if you want to keep your mask on or not. But first service, mandatory mask through the whole thing, and we recommend mask at the second service. But second service coming in and out for sure, when you move in, you need to have a mask. I just want to get that out there because that is a change up, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be keeping everybody safe, and we'll see people here on Sunday morning, which we are doing, which is awesome. But hey, today, uh, we celebrate all saints, like I said, and to do that, we get going with our first hymn, hymn number 507, if you have a hymnal at home, or you're following along, but it's one of my favorite, the, an old traditional one, Holy, Holy, Holy. On this day in which we celebrate all saints, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're going to be asking a question. Are you going to be amongst those who are counted up in heaven? We're going to hear a reading from Revelations from John. And 
something I want you to think about. Before we go into confession and absolution, if you say, well, really, I don't have anything to confess, which um, I can't believe that, but I want you to think about a few things. What have you been doing with your faith? Have you let it get stale and stagnant? Just kind of going on, ah, I'm good, I'll be in heaven. Have we failed to grow in God's word? Have we failed to do those things? Have we failed to recognize those things that what truly gets us to heaven? And have we held on to them? That's where I'll go with this. So let's take a few moments of personal private confession. And then we will hear God's wonderful words of absolution. Let us pray. Gracious Father, on this day in which we celebrate the saints, send down your Holy Spirit to be upon us and to be our intercessor as we lift up our prayers of confession to you. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you this day, as we begin our worship, as we raise up our prayers of confession, hear them now. Allow us to lay before the base of the cross those sins that we know we have done and even the sins we ask that we did and we didn't know to be absolved. We lay those also before the base of the cross. Let the Holy Spirit to guide and lead us in be in our intercessor, but also be in our faith guide that continues to keep us strong in our faith and allows us to keep our vision, not on ourselves, but upon you. We pray this now all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with our song, O Lord. It seems like I'm coming undone This walk can often feel lonely No matter what, until this race is won I will stand my ground Where hope can be found I will stand my ground where hope can be found. Oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, I know you hear my cry. Your love is lifting me above all the lights. No matter what I face this, I know in time, you'll take Reaches to the hurting. Still through the tears and the questioning, why I will stand my ground. I will stand.
I will stand my ground. I will stand my ground where hope can be found. I will stand my ground where hope can be found. Oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, I know you hear my cry. Your love is lifting me above all the lights. No matter what I face, this I know in time. You'll take all that is wrong and make it right. You'll take all that is wrong and make it right. Make it right. Make it right, right. Good morning, Emmanuel. How are you? Happy belated Halloween. I hope everybody had a great night. Spending time with your family, maybe carving pumpkins or making cookies, or if you were lucky enough to go out and get some candy. It's the best part about Halloween, right? It's Halloween candy. So when you eat your candy and you pour it all into a bowl after you've inspected it with your parents, do you eat your favorite pieces first? And then maybe take a risk of having a bowl of boring candy left over? Or what about swapping that? Instead of eating your best pieces first, do you eat the boring pieces first and maybe you save your best pieces for last? But then if you do that, you take the risk of somebody swiping your best piece of candy or a sneaky parent trying to steal your candy, right? So today I wanna to talk about being first versus being last. To be first in God's kingdom, we have to put ourselves last. And you might say, that's confusing. How am I first of putting myself last? We do this by being a servant to all, by putting others before us. Just like a few weeks ago, I talked about outdoing one another and showing honor and love. It's a very easy thing to do, right? You can do this in big ways, by holding doors for strangers, letting people in front of you in traffic. Um, if you're going up to, for Halloween and everybody's running to the door for candy, standing back and letting the other kids go first. Or doing something in a small way, such as being nice and not having an attitude with your parents when they ask you to do chores. Or being kind and gracious to your sibling when maybe you just don't feel like it. All of these ways is not seeking to glorify ourselves, but seeking to glorify God, who gives us the gift, the free gift, um, of eternal life just by believing in His Son, who absolutely put everybody first. Imagine Jesus up on that cross and he thought, this isn't going to work for me. This is not in my best interest. And he did not do it. Well, then we wouldn't be sitting here today and I wouldn't have the great gift of being able to share God's word. But Jesus did that. Jesus put himself last. And because of that, it gives us a chance to go to heaven and be first in the kingdom of heaven. So I challenge you to let God be glorified by your work in big ways or even small ways. Because guys, the small things matter. So go forward, enjoy your candy, eat it first, eat it last, eat the chocolate, eat the sweet, enjoy it. But remember, in everything that we do is G to the third. Give God the glory. And we glorify God by serving Christ, by having that Christ-like attitude. So a few verses about this. 1 Corinthians 10, 24. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. And then Philippians 2, 4. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. That's pretty plain, guys. Both verses literally state, don't look to your own interest, but to the interest of others. And that can be hard sometimes, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do it. So let's bow our head in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for the gift of being able to speak your message to others and let them have ears to hear it, God, and let us just remember to go forward being bold in our faith and following that desire in our hearts to put others first, whether in a large way or a small way. Let us just see the impact, the glorious and large impact that our actions can have on others for your kingdom when we put others first. Thank you so much for this gift, and thank you so much for the power to keep doing it. Amen. Have a great day. Thank you.
Our first reading for this morning is John's book of Revelation, the seventh chapter, beginning at the second verse. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of God, and 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph. 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb, in the midst of the throne, will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from 1 John, the third chapter. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. See in the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue as a community and as a family. We speak the words of the Apostles' Creed in confessing our common faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with, you know, it's a song we always, I try to usually end our funeral services with it. I like to call them coronation services. Um, but it's one of my favorite songs. It, what a, celibate, a celebratory song it is. For someday we shall gather because and why we're going to do it for all the saints. Today, the church throughout the world is celebrating All Saints Day. All the saints who have gone on before us. 
Now, I've got a question for you. You know, I get a lot of questions about what will heaven be like? Who's going to be there? Am I going to recognize my loved ones? Uh, well, John shows us at least there's going to be people from each tribe and race. But my question for you this morning is this. Will you be counted as one of the saints on that day? Now you're probably thinking, well, <laughs> of course I will be, Pastor. Are you so sure? Are you sure about that? Let's look at Revelations and see what John has to say about it. First, let's remember what Revelations is all about. It's probably one of the longest books. It's also probably one of the most confusing books. One of the most misinterpreted books. So you get my idea where I'm going with this. But we know the author of the book was John, the son of Zebedee one of the disciples. Christians were entering that time of persecution. Uh, there's two thoughts on the, on the dating of it. Nero, during his reign, uh, 54 to 68, Anno Domine. Later part of D D Domitian's reign in 8196. A lot of scholars put it in right about 95 AD. Either way, here's what was happening. The Romans were enforcing emperor worship. Caesar was the only lord. You dare not have any other lord, especially Jesus Christ. Churches had warned of this coming opposition. And Tiphys was already killed for his faith, so they, could, they saw what could happen when you stand up for your faith. John is exiled out to the island of Patmos for being a Christian missionary. And so now John, as he is in solitude out on this island, he writes to the people. He writes to us. He wants to encourage us, and he's encouraging the people to resist the emperor worship. And he warns them, Satan is going to do everything he can to weaken you so you fall away from the faith. Now, we have to understand how to look at Revelations, the book. It's apocalyptic, and it's highly symbolic. It's about the end times and what will be happening. They use symbolism of numbers to get a lot of the messages across. Number seven symbolizes the completeness, symbolizing the reunion of God with men through this new covenant. Even in our Sanctuary, we have seven candles on each candelabra. We continue on with that symbolism. Three and a half, those, that evil force of spiritual and religious character that oppose the church. It's the broken covenant. And what number symbolizes the church? Think about this now. How many tribes were there? Twelve. How many apostles were there? Twelve. <laughs> yeah. Number 12 is the church in the book of Revelations. But now the question is, how do we interpret that? Well, there's four different views of that. The preterist claiming the events already took place in first century, so this is nothing new. It's old hat. Forget it. Historicist describing events from Patmos to the end of history. Futurist talks primarily this is only going to be happening at the end of times. And idealist, well, it's just symbolic of a timeless truth. Evil versus good. Yin and yang. Uh, good, bad, evil, you get it. We kind of hold to the historicist part of it as a preferable view. John's trying to teach us about from the beginning of Jesus' ministry until he comes again. Our verse for today is Revelation 7, 9. John has just listed the 12 tribes. And please note, uh, there is going to be more than this number up in heaven. Again, 
the numbers are symbolic. There's meaning there's going to be a huge number of believers. For us today, that you know, we can talk millions, billions, trillions. Uh, if John was alive today, he might have said 12 trillion from this tribe. You, get a, you understand what I'm trying to say. It's just saying a whole lot of people. A whole lot of saints will be up there from each tribe, from each church. So our verse, uh, Revelation 7, 9. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every tribe, from every nation, every people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. So here's my question for you today. Are you part of that group? Are you in any one of those tribes? Are you going to be one of those saints that will be counted in the end? And are you sure about that? And if you are so sure about it, what is it that will allow that to happen? Why would you be there as one of the saints? Now, you might be surprised at the answer I get to that question a lot of times. I hear from the younger people, well, pfft, I have plenty of time to get close to God. I'm young. I don't die till I'm 95, so I'm going to have fun right now and worry about that later. I love this one, and I've heard it in more than one of the churches I serve, especially those churches that still have well, it's not even just that. It's just churches that have multi-generationals, which is all our churches. And usually I get, well, pff, my parents go every Sunday. My parents give their offering. Even though I'm 44, I don't have to do it because my parents are doing it for me. Wow. You're going to get into heaven on the coattails of your parents. Wow. Wow. Or I hear, you know, Pastor, I'm baptized, and I went through that grueling thing called confirmation, and I graduated, so I don't need to do any more. Yeah, that's going to get you far. I've always liked this one. I live, I'm in the same church in which I was hatched, matched, and someday I will be dispatched, and that's what's going to get me to heaven. So I'm good. Here's the one I think... Where, where, where Satan gets to the most of us. You think, okay, every Sunday for the most part I'm here, unless there's four feet of snow coming down at one time. Every Sunday I give my offering. Every Sunday I do exactly what I'm supposed to do. I maybe have done my part and been on the church council or taught Sunday school. So hey, I'll be one of those saints and be counted someday in heaven. Huh. Any of those sound familiar? Are you comfortable with your faith and the actions of your faith? Or have you gotten complacent? We've done all we can do. I don't have to do any more. Kind of the Reformed theology. Once saved, always saved. Sorry, that's not the way it works. I work so hard. I deserve to be in heaven. Look, I put up with the church council for how many years? Or look, I've sat in my same spot for how many years? I hope I'm getting some of you at least a little bit nervous. I mean, I think you and I are a lot alike. I really want to be in heaven. I want to be counted. I want to be amongst the saints up there giving praise and honor and glory to a heavenly Father for an eternity. Talk about an awesome time. But we're human. We have been told how and why we can be there in heaven. But yet we think and feel 
We need to do something about it. I first realized this when I was at the seminary. I was called home. You know, if you know my family history, my mom and dad passed early. I went to live with an aunt and an uncle. My aunt had a serious heart attack, and she was in the hospital. She wasn't coming out. We pretty much knew that. So I was called home. And, uh, you know, it, she, she was awake and everything. We weren't sure, um, you know, you know how it goes. They could pass today or they could pass a month from now. And both my uncle and my aunt said, get back to the seminary. Just, just go back and do your norms. We'll call you if anything changes, basically. They were a good German couple. They didn't communicate much, you know. Um, but either way, before I left, I'm talking to Ann, and she's got all these machines on her and everything. And you know what she was worried about? And, and I'm talking about a faithful woman who was in church every Sunday. And it didn't matter what time I came home on Saturday night, Sunday morning. I had my rear end in the pew on Sunday morning. She did all the activities, LWML, the ladies ate everything. Born, bred, hatched, matched, and, and dispatched all in the same church. Faithful good members at Bethesda Lutheran. Heard the gospel how many times? And yet, as she faced death, she questioned if she had done enough. I was blown away, to be honest with you. That was one of those first times, it's like, okay, Jesus, give me the words to say, because I don't even know what to say on this one. I think I was second year seminarian. I mean, come on, give me a break here. She didn't know what, if she had done enough. She was worried she had not done enough. As her heart was giving, her out, it was giving out, I reminded her of the gift, that it wasn't what she did, it's what Jesus did. It was interesting, to say the least, to see that doubt. But it was also awe-inspiring to see the comfort and the peace of God which came upon her when she was told, it's been done, it's been paid for. It's promised she will be counted as that multitude in heaven, not because of what she had done, but because of what Jesus Christ had done for her. The actions of Jesus dying and rising on the cross, given in the shedding of his blood on that cross that paid for our transgressions. But man, we lose, we, we lose sight of that if we think about it. Have you thought about that? I mean... Tomorrow, Monday, when you're out and about or you hear a friend maybe has COVID or something is happening again. I mean, right now, every, you turn on the TV and it's fear this, fear that, fear this again, and we're all in trouble. And it's like, wow. It brings all those doubts and all those uncomfortable feelings in. They start to creep back in. And we get complacent with our faith and we forget the true gospel. So today, on this All Saints Day, here's what I want you to do. Renew your faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let that Spirit move in you. Not just today, but every day from this time forth. Let the Holy Spirit carry you. Open up your Bible at home and start to read it again. Maybe find a daily devotional. Get into God's word each and every day. And when we can, let's gather together and lift each other up as a Christian community. Remember, you are his disciple. And as a disciple, we want to continue to grow in the word. As his disciples, we share his word and gifts so that others too can share in the gift of Christ's salvation. Today, celebrate all saints. Celebrate the saints who have gone before us. But today, also celebrate 
that Jesus gave to us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can remain in faith, so we can grow in our faith, so we can be moved in our actions to be his disciples who make disciples. Today, celebrate the strength, the power, and most of all, most importantly, the peace which can only come from Jesus Christ and his love that allows us to face each day. No matter what may come, we can do all things through him who loves us, Christ Jesus our Lord. And all the saints say, Amen. We continue with some special music now as... I want to thank everybody for your generosity in supporting us here at Emmanuel through our times of ministry. Uh, to say ministry is different at this point is an understatement, but we are here, we are ministering, we are reaching out with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are disciples who are making other disciples. Let us as his saints now go to him in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted in them honorably and for the good of the people, and allow us to truly as a nation to peacefully gather together as we vote this coming week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who serve in worthy occupations, professions, arts, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty the Lord provides to support and to help those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick, especially those that are upon our hearts, that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who mourn, especially as we remember the saints who have gone on before us, our loved ones, 
that in their time of sorrow, that we would not lose hope, but rely on God's promise that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they may always remember the giver of every gift and give him heartfelt thanks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we greatly remember the sufferings and the death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. For you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for gathering us together as your saints and then taking us all home someday to gather together for an eternity in praising you. And we thank you for the prayer then. You've taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up, lift up his favor upon you and give to you his peace. Amen. You know, as God's saints here on this earth yet, as we go through these very trying times, there's one thing we do have to remember and we hold fast to. For one, we have the Holy Spirit to keep us in faith and to embolden us and to empower us. But that spirit will always remind us that God is with us. Who are we that you would be mindful of us? What do you see that's worth looking our way?
want to thank you for joining us this morning. I hope this service for all saints has been a blessing for you. Uh, if you have any questions about faith or coming to Jesus, the Spirit has moved you to do that. Please get a hold of us. We would love for you to be a part of our community here in Invergrove Heights. Uh, if there's something we can do for you and help you, please let us know. As I said at the beginning of our service, for our members and for others, uh, our Sunday morning service is 8 o'clock is our traditional service. At that service, masks will be mandatory all the time, including while you are sitting in the pew. So will you leave your mask on? Um, so 8 o'clock service, mask mandatory through the whole thing. The 1030 service, we ask that you, we recommend you wearing masks all the time, but at least wear it until you get into the pew and when you're sitting down, um, you can take it off. We're not going to, you know, because I... I'm still trying to get used to my mask on for a full hour. Um, so we've got your choices, 8 and 10.30. 10.30 is our contemporary worship. 8 o'clock is traditional. So hope to see you here. Uh, with that in mind, we ask that God will bless all of you as we go out into his world celebrating that we are all someday will be his saints and we are stay firm and strong in God's word. May God go with you. Thank you.